Hello Shogi Variant fans, as well as would-be Shogi Variant fans. The variant of this video is Tori Shogi, which is a variant created in 1799 by Toyota Genyu and sometimes attributed to his master Ohashi Soe. Tori Shogi means bird shogi, as all its pieces are named after birds. So as far as Shogi variants go, this is the oldest that is in part of the original line of the natural Shogi evolution, which includes variants like Chu Shogi, etc. Most other variants weren't invented until modern times, with the earliest being Mini Shogi around 1970. So this puts it in a very interesting spot, where it kind of straddles the line between historic variant and a modern variant. Uh, despite its age, it's apparently still relatively popular as far as Shogi variants go. So let's learn more about the game. Tori Shogi, as well as most Shogi variants, is played with pieces that use kanji, which are Chinese characters. Since they're all types of birds, the kanji is relatively complex. So we'll be sticking with these internationalized pieces for this instead. The bonus of these pieces is that most of these tell you how they move, based on the poses of the birds. So let's start with the basic setup. The game is on a 7x7 board. As with standard shogi, pieces you've captured can be dropped onto the board on a free square, as long as it's legal. Also, as with Shogi, there are promotions, but only two of those pieces promote. I'll discuss the promotion rules later. The goal of the game is to checkmate the opponent's phoenix. So speaking of the phoenix, well, let's go over the pieces. The pieces in Tori Shogi are very unique. Movements are typically unconventional by chess variant standards, and many new players can get easily intimidated. I'll try to make it as simple as possible. And the way I think of it is by grouping the pieces into four different groups. The first group of pieces are your basic pieces that everyone easily understands. And these two pieces also represent the heart of Tori Shogi. They are the equivalent of the king and the pawn. And since their moves are so simple, these are the only pieces where their poses don't actually reflect their movement. So since I talked about the phoenix, that's going to be our first piece. And the phoenix is essentially this game's king. It moves just like any other chess king, which is one square in any direction. I should also note that there are two different colored phoenixes in this set. And this is similar to how uh, the internationalized shogi set deals with things. So as the shogi, sente is considered black and gote is considered white. And so this dark phoenix is the black phoenix and this light phoenix is the white phoenix. And so this player, is Sente and this player is Gote. This distinction doesn't actually exist in the original pieces, but it's just something that's been added to improve the understanding of the game. Next we have the Swallow, and this is basically your pawn. More specifically, the Shogi pawn, where it just moves and captures one square forward. The second group of pieces are the King-like pieces. They're quote-unquote King-like because they move one square in most directions, but with a couple gaps as you can see in this diagram here. And you can also think of these as the equivalents of the generals in Shogi. So let's start with the Falcon. The Falcon is the most powerful unpromoted piece in the game. And its movement is essentially the king, but it cannot move backwards. The Falcon will promote, and I'll go over that later. Next you have two cranes. And the cranes also move like kings, but cannot move to the sides. Now the third group of pieces is what I call the reverse Y-shaped pieces. As you can see here, their movement pattern basically resembles an upside down Y. And these are the two remaining pieces that flank each side of the board. They're in a sense your knight and lance from Shogi, but move quite differently. Let's begin with the pheasant. So as you can tell by the direction of the feet and its tail, the pheasant can move to these spots diagonally backwards. And on top of that, the pheasant has a leaping motion where it could jump two squares forward, and that means it could jump over any piece that's in its way, kind of like a knight. Next you have the two quails, and there are actually two different pieces. There's a left quail and a right quail, and they both start in the two different corners of the board. For each quail, the tail points to where it can move one step diagonally backwards like this, but its talons point to where it can move any number of squares diagonally, like that. Also, its head is pointing straight up, so it attacks straight up like a lance. 
The right quail does the same thing, but just in the opposite directions. So the tail points to the right instead. And its talons point down and to the left. Also, its head points up, just like a lance as well. The final group of pieces are the Y-shaped pieces. And it just so happens that these are the only two promoted pieces in the game. The next piece is the Swallow's promotion. The Swallow promotes into the Wild Goose, or Goose for short. And the Goose has a very funny way of moving. Basically, just draw a Y and imagine a leaping movement. So, it can move two spaces diagonally coming off this wing, two spaces diagonally coming off this wing, or two spaces to the back. It's following this goose egg over here. So again, this is a Y-shaped pattern and it jumps over any piece in its way. Finally, we have the Falcon's promotion, which is the Mountain Hawk Eagle, or also known as the Eagle for short. So just like the goose, the dominant feature of the eagle is a Y-shaped pattern. But instead of this jumping two squares in a Y, it actually attacks kind of like a queen, but in a Y shape. So diagonally forwards and then straight down backwards. On top of that, the next part of its movement is that it gains king movement. So let me just fill in the squares over here. And of course that also includes these squares already covered by the Y movement. And the last component of its movement is that it can move two squares diagonally. This is not a leaping movement, so a piece can block an eagle from moving over here. So for example, if this swallow was over here, this eagle cannot move over here because it's blocked. Now that I've gone over all the pieces, let's talk about promotions. So just like in original Shogi, there are promotion zones, and the promotion zones are these two ranks in the back for you, and these two ranks in the back for your opponent. So when your piece moves into the promotion zone, it promotes. But there is one crucial difference between Tori Shogi and original Shogi in that promotions are mandatory. This is especially important for Swallows. As you can see in this example over here, you might think normally, oh, I could push this Swallow over here and basically get this free Quail. But that's not actually what happens. Once the Swallow reaches this promotion zone, it's forced to become a Goose. And this Goose cannot attack this Quail over here. All it could do is just jump backwards. So also like Shogi, if you drop a piece into the promotion zone and move it from within, it'll promote. This is especially powerful with the falcon. So if you move a falcon within a promotion zone, it promotes and becomes a deadly eagle. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about is drops and illegal drops. Now if you look at the starting position, any experienced shogi player may realize, wait, there are two swallows in one file. I thought that was illegal. Well, it's illegal for shogi pawns, but swallows are not the same as shogi pawns. They can be doubled up. So actually the rule for Tori Shogi is you can have at max two swallows per file. So in this situation here, if you wanted to drop this swallow on file 3, you can't do that until you lose a swallow. But say if this swallow were to promote into a goose, now you only have one swallow here and so you can drop another swallow, for example here. Can you drop a swallow here? Nope, that's illegal just like in original Shogi because this swallow cannot technically move anymore. The other rule that returns from Shogi is Uchi Fuzume, or the drop pawn mate rule, although in this case it's a drop swallow mate rule. And it's the same deal. You cannot mate the opponent's phoenix with a swallow drop. So this technically mates the phoenix, but because you had to drop a swallow to do so, this is illegal. And actually you've lost the game by doing so because you played an illegal move. Dropping any other piece to make the phoenix is okay though. Finally, the last rule from original shogi is repetition, also known as senichite. It's a little bit different in tori shogi, and I'll explain shortly. 
I'm going to use this game as an example. And the rule for repetition in Tori Shogi is that if the same position occurs three times with the same player to play, that player starting the sequence must vary the move. And for two positions to be considered the same, the position on the board and the pieces in hand have to be the same. So let me illustrate here. We have Sente on the bottom, and then we have Gote up here at the top. Sente opens with a falcon move, and then now we have a swallow exchange. And this is the position I want you to keep in mind, because this is the first position in a series of repetitions. Because now Gote is going to go for an edge attack by dropping a swallow over there. And Sente defends with another swallow drop. And then now we have an exchange. And now here you see we're back in the same position. So this is repetition number two. And then the same thing happens. We're in repetition number three. And then here, if Sente retakes with the swallow, that recreates the same position four times, which actually results in a loss. And this is different than regular shogi and shogi that results in a draw. But in this case, this really discourages, I guess, defensive play in this case. So sente has to vary the move. So for example, by doing something like this crane over here. So those are all the rules for Tori Shogi. Hope you enjoyed. And be sure to give it a try. Don't let the weird piece movements intimidate you. Just practice a little bit and I'm sure you'll get used to it. If you'd like to continue seeing videos like this, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey, don't you know about the bird? Sure, everybody knows that the bird is the word. Oh, well, a bird, bird, but birds are word, oh, well, a bird. Again, again, I love repetition.